it needs to be understood uh, clearly on Aquinas's view, as Richard says, it is impossible for us to form a conception of God. Because but I, that's the, not what I said, though. Well, you said we cannot conceptualize the divine essence. No, in fact, I, I, I would say the opposite in this respect, that what we cannot do is the intellect can't abstract God's form. Okay. But, but the intellect can never fail to ultimately talk about things of existence in conceptual terms. Well, so I was we going to get form. to that. Yeah. Um, so because we grasp things by grasping their essence or their form, and God doesn't have that, he just is the pure act of being, Thomas admit that God is incomprehensible. You, you, the intellect cannot grasp the pure act of being. And these statements then that we predicate about God aren't univocally true. They're only analogically true. And without a univocal element, they're, they're empty. Um, Brian, in, in Brian's paper, he says, when I say my computer is good, my steak is good, or a person is good, I don't really mean the same thing in an exact way. They all have something in common regarding goodness. And that is what you cannot say with respect to God on Thomism, because there isn't that univocal element. Um, in the end, these predications are empty. So, in general, of course Aquinas affirms these sorts of things, but the question is, is he justified in affirming these sorts of things? And it seems to me that his metaphysic undermines um, these statements about God whereby we would like to say that God is truly good and truly not a deceiver and, and so forth. Um, I have a quick question maybe for both of you, but Bill, if you could help me understand your position better. As I was doing my research on uh, the modal collapse, um, I was um, wondering how you would respond to um, how it would affect your position, because you seem to maintain that God sans creation is eternal, although I don't... You I, mean timeless. I know you're timeless, okay. Pardon, Pardon okay. me, you mean timeless. Timeless, okay. Yes. Right. Well, can you help me understand what you mean, or what you would mean, by saying God willed creation in a sense. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clarify in my mind, how does that not escape the modal collapse in your own position if, if God is timeless and God will have to will, so to speak? Does, does that in well, any way relate to, to the modal collapse? to be timeless is not the same as being immutable. Timelessness implies changelessness, but it doesn't imply necessity. There could be worlds in which God exists timelessly without any creation. And in this world, he, he exists with a creation. There's, I don't see any connection at all between being timeless and some things being metaphysically necessary. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to get at is if God is timeless, then there's no before and after with his right. will, right? right. Then, so God timelessly wills that there be a creation. Right. I'm trying to understand how you see the difference between timelessly wills on your model and eternally wills on our model. What would be the difference? My objection to God's will on your model isn't that it's eternally willed. Mm -hmm. It's that it's necessarily willed. Because he's necessarily And I think that that's something you didn't deal with adequately. The, um, what you argued using suppositional necessity is that we can have uh, the necessity of if God wills X, then X will happen. And that's necessarily true, that whole conditional. If God wills X, X will necessarily, or X will happen. But the point I think that we're trying to make is that on Thomism, it's not mere suppositional necessity. The antecedent is necessary that God wills necessarily whatever he wills because his will is the same as his essence and therefore there is no possibility of willing otherwise. And that implies logical fatalism, as I said, and, that, and, and it denies that creation is a contingent act of God, denies that creatures exist contingently. Everything becomes logically necessary. How, how so you, this sorry. idea of suppositional necessity just isn't going to avoid modal collapse. Okay. 
This is a different subject now. Do you not think God is necessary in his being as, as a timeless being? We do. I mean, both Steve and I yeah. want to affirm God's metaphysical necessity, but that doesn't mean that God in different possible worlds can't will differently, know differently, love different creatures. Whereas on Aquinas' view, since God is simple, he's absolutely similar in every possible world. He always wills the same, loves the same, knows the same. And so it's hard to see how there can be different possible worlds. And don't get hung up on possible worlds here. For me, that's just a heuristic device. Okay. I, by, I'm an anti-realist about possible worlds. Right, right. Um, <laughs> But it, it, it's, it's simply to say that on simplicity, it's impossible for God to, to will any differently than what he does will because his will is his essence. Okay, so the way you would escape that collapse in your, in your model is that his will is distinct from his necessary being? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that God exists necessarily, but he doesn't will what he wills necessarily. And especially, it's evident that he doesn't know what he knows necessarily, because he could have created different creatures in which he would, in case he would have different knowledge. Like, had he created nobody at all, he would say, "I am alone. I have not." I, he would have the knowledge, "I exist alone. There are no creatures." Um, but it seems to me that on Thomism, um, because his knowledge is his essence, he can't know any differently than what he knows. You have to say that the same simple state of God could count as radically different knowledge and will in these uh, various scenarios. And as I said, I think then that, that strange Thomistic doctrine makes it inexplicable as to why creatures exist and differ as they do. I think you guys should just bite the bullet and be fatalists. It seems like Aquinas is, is denying, though, that, that God wills anything of necessity, that he wills because he, he freely chooses to. But there's nothing in his nature that requires him to will. And I, I just don't see anything. He's a necessary being, and he, his will is identical to his essence. But why does that mean that he, what he wills? He wills of necessity as opposed to choosing from all eternity, well choosing in quotes, from all eternity or willing from all eternity what he wills and that making it necessary because he wills it, not, will it, not willing it because he's necessary. Well, to think of it in the simplest terms, what God wills would be an essential property of God. Now I know you don't think that God has properties, but use that façon de parler that uh, it, it belongs to the very essence of God to will what he in fact is willing and couldn't have been otherwise, that leads then immediately to this kind of modal collapse. Let me say in kind of a, as a concluding word, one of the things that I, I think is inadequate about the Thomistic response to many of these objections is that one will simply say, well, Thomas anticipated that objection and here's what he said and that's the end of the story. Um, whereas it seems to me in many cases what Thomas said was inconsistent with his own view, like the fact that he certainly does affirm that God could have willed and known differently, uh, or that he does think that God is good and that God is omniscient. It, there's, it, it seems to me that it's not enough just to cite the proof text from Aquinas and say he's anticipated the objection, because in many cases the response that he gives seems to me to be incoherent with this broader doctrine of God being the pure act of being. Does, does the, assuming we are fatalist, would that disprove simplicity? If, if, we, if, we, if we bite the bullet and become fatalists, would that be an, would that, that would really? that would remove the modal objection or yeah. the modal collapse yeah. objection, yeah. but Brian, you don't want to go there. I I'm mean, not, that, that's so there. radically I'm not, crazy. I'm not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not trying to go there. I'm just want okay. to understand. Even given that's the case, it doesn't seem like it's an objection to simplicity per se. Like, yeah, well, I think it is because logical fatalism. I mean, it's so absurd and so un, 
unchristian and unbiblical. Yeah, I'm, I don't hold to it, obviously. I'm no, no, of course not. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes a person can say to an objection, well, I'll just bite the bullet and accept that consequence. But I mean, in this case, it's so, it's so insane that one just couldn't do that, I think, and, and come away No, I agree unscathed. with you, but it'll seem like you have to move beyond simplicity to make that point, that it doesn't disprove simplicity as such. So we can show its incoherence in other areas, maybe. It shows that but simplicity, simplicity leads to untoward consequences. You have to like, that, pull other, other areas? Yeah, okay. yeah. Sort of like a reductio ad absurdum. In yeah, life. yeah, that's it. I, I take you to be doing.